today's webinar, I'm going to cover how the bad guys are designing malware to use the DNS protocol to get around traditional security defenses to enable themselves to connect to bad domains, to expand attacks, and exfiltrate information. DNS, domain name system, is how every user connects to the network and it accesses any website or application out on the internet. Without DNS, accessing an application or a website wouldn't be possible. But for many companies, DNS is a forgotten part of the network infrastructure that is taken for granted. It shouldn't be because it plays a critical part of enabling users to connect to applications. We'll now examine how DNS is being used and abused by the bad guys to mask connectivity to, of malware to bad domains to get instructions and exfiltrate information. Since the start of 2013, there have been many hacks and attacks to major businesses throughout the world. The New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, Facebook, and media companies and banks in South Korea are just a few examples. All of these institutions have strong defense and depth strategies with firewalls, intrusion prevention, antivirus, data leak prevention, and yet they were still successfully hacked and attacked. Let's narrow our focus a bit and talk about what happened, what happened at Facebook. In the case of Facebook, several employees took their laptops off-site and became infected with the Java-based malware. When they brought their work laptops back into the Facebook facilities, the malware started the process of connecting to servers in Russia. Fortunately, Facebook administrators uh, do a daily review of the DNS logs and happen to find a large amount of traffic to a suspicious domain in Russia. This is how they uncovered the malware infestation. Do you really have the time to do daily searches through the DNS logs? And if you did, could you easily spot traffic going to a bad domain? And if you've gotten so far, uh, so far with a yes to each one of these questions, how would you be able to pinpoint and go about cleaning the malware infestation? Well, we'll answer all those questions, but let's first understand how malware is used as DNS to connect to bad domains. Fastflux, the rapid change of IP addresses. This is how malware can find botnets and command and control servers without having to use the fixed IP addresses, um, which are, can easily be blocked. Fastflux was discovered and confirmed by security researchers in November 2006 and has been used significantly since then to make blocking communication between on-site malware and internet-based malwares and command and control servers hard to stop. The simplest type of fast flux um, is referred to as single flux. It's characterized by multiple nodes within a network registering and deregistering their addresses as part of a DNS A address record for a single DNS name. This combines a round-robin DNS with very short, usually less than five minutes time to live values to create a constantly changing list of destination addresses for that single DNS name. This list can be hundreds or thousands of entries long. A more sophisticated type of fast flux, referred to as double flux, is characterized by multiple nodes within the network registering and deregistering your addresses as part of the DNS uh, name record list for a sync DNS zone. This adds an additional layer of redundancy and survivability within a bad network. With a, within a malware attack, the DNS records normally point to a compromised system that will act as a proxy server. This me method pre prevents some of the traditionally best defense mechanisms from working, i.e. IP-based access control lists. This method also can be masked the systems of attackers, which can exploit the network through a series of proxies and make it more difficult to identify attackers' network. The record would normally point to an IP address with the bot code for registration to receive instructions. Here's a real-world example of FastBox in action. Burrito Lab, located in Holland, was first reported in mid-2009. This bad domain houses a number of different malware. It uses a dropper framework for distributing malware. Some of the malware used by Burrito Lab includes ZBot, SpyEye, TDSS, Airbot, and Blocken. Burrito Labs uses FastBox DNS to spread the infected machines across many command and control servers. 
Command and control servers are spread across multiple data centers, making it difficult to bring down the infrastructure. In October 2010, the Dutch police uh, attempted a takedown of Brito Labs and took over 143 controllers. But because of the spread of the infrastructure was so complex across multiple data centers, they were unsuccessful and the infrastructure was active again within just a few months. So let's talk about now how DNS Firewall helps protect against Mirewall. DNS Firewall is an application that sits atop the DNS servers and permits malware infection and execution by blocking communication via the DNS protocol or not reserving resolving DNS queries by other applications, such as applications making DNS queries such as Internet Relay Chat, Session Initiated Protocol Applications, FTP, or etc. It leverages a high quality mal malware data feed, which is updated every two hours. The DNS Firewall Malware Data Feed Services um, specifically uh, updates the DNS Firewall uh, to protect it against changing IP addresses and malware networks. It uses the DNS Notify function to set up the data transfer. Infoblox DHCP server release 6.7 has added DHCP fingerprinting. For those Infoblox DNS, DNS firewall, DHCP, and IP address management customers, this means the DNS firewall, in conjunction with Trinsic Reporting Server, can now report not only by which IP address made the bad DNS query, but also identify the MAC address and, via DHCP fingerprinting, the device or OS type. What this does is enable security personnel to triangulate which device is infected and should be targeted for cleanup. Very few vendors, vendors can provide this level of information for security personnel to do remediation. Also, by, by seeing the, the device or the operating system infected, security personnel can start to get an idea of what types of devices are getting infected the rate of infection, and possibly form corporate policies around such. So here is a view of the DNS firewall RPG report from the Trinsic reporting server. As you can see, it helps IT security personnel to ID the infected devices for remediation. The top part of the report, it shows the top uh, DNS queries uh, to bad domains by IP address. Security personnel can ID the infected device by IP address, drilling down. In this case, what they can then see is the specific information about that device, which the IP address was leased out via DHCP. Then they can see the MAC address, then the device type, information captured during the finger, DNS finger uh, printing process. As you can see in the lower right-hand part of the screen in the drill-down window, you can see that the device making the bad queries is an Apple iPad or iPhone because they're using iOS. On the screen now is a simple high-level listing of devices the Infoblox DHCP fingerprinting can identify. Also covered by DHCP fingerprinting, but not listed on the screen above, are audio video equipment, network bot, uh, boot agents, projectors, network storage devices, and thin clients. Not only does DHCP fingerprinting help administrators see which devices are infected for remediation, but also provides them a view of which devices are getting infected so they can help shape corporate policies as far as managing their networks. So how does Infoblox keep DNS firewall up to date? Again, it does so via the malware data feed service. Infoblox works with an outside vendor to specifically design its reputational services to be comprehensive on a worldwide basis. Information from 35 plus different sources, some pub public, you can see the logos at the bottom of the slide, and some private sources um, across the US and Europe and Asia, all the information from these sources are combined to create a, a feed that is comprehensive in information. The, the reputational feed is pushed out every two hours via DNS Notify to the internet facing IP address provided by the customer of their DNS firewall server. The deltas, the changes as far as every two hours are sent out and DNS firewall updates its table of IP addresses and domains to be blocked. For those customers who have Infoblox DNS servers set up with blacklist, 
these can also work in conjunction with DNS firewall. So as far as blocking certain domains that they do not want employees to go to, this can be done as well. Here is a copy of here's the information on the Infoblox malware data feed service. Infoblox offers its customers a choice of up to seven reputational feeds. Three are before you on the screen now um, are listed from top to bottom as far as um, smaller to larger size. So in this case, CNC R2Z Infoblox.local is a, a, a very small, efficient feed designed to catch botnets, command and control servers, um, and drop boxes, as well as name servers. If, as you look at RPZ uh, feed malware.rpzinfoblox.local, it builds on the CNC drive-by and the CNC RPZ by adding those feeds, as well as an, another level of information on malware host and domain servers. This gives customers a choice of picking the, the level of service that they want that fits their needs. Combination feeds. Before you now are the uh, layers and levels of uh, four through seven of the malware data feed service. The four feeds below consist of the malicious feeds um, as far as malware, um, and these include geoblocks. And geoblocks are important because they allow our businesses to completely block their employees from going to certain domains in certain countries, which is notorious for housing a number of bad domains. And these are ideal for government because many governments, especially at the state and local level, do not do business on an international basis. As always, best practices from a security perspective should always be followed. In the case of DNS malware data feed service, the best practice for distributing the DNS firewall uh, malware data feed service is to have a DNS firewall on the DNS server in the DMZ. It would get the feed from the from InfoBlock via DNS Notify and then distribute it to the internal DNS firewall uh, on the DNS recursive servers. This is best practices for the following reasons. A single hole, port 53, through the firewall is open to a single server. This minimizes exposure externally. The trusted server, in this case the InfoBlox DNS server, in the ZMZ, then does the distribution of the uh, updates to the uh, internal uh, InfoBlox DNS firewall uh, on the recursive DNS servers via DNS Notify. So again, this protects um, the internal servers from being exposed uh, externally. So let me summarize um, what we've talked about as far as DNS firewall. DNS firewall blocks, redirects DNS queries to bad dom IPs and domains so malware does not connect to botnets and command and control server and information does not leave the network. DNS firewall on top of InfoBlox DNS in conjunction with DHCP and IP address management, can pinpoint and report on infected devices by IP and MAC address, as well as DHCP fingerprint, to provide unparalleled information to security personnel to help them perform remediation. DNS firewall is continually updated, so changes to the botnets, command and control IPs, domains, and malware are continually captured, compiled, and sent out to enable DNS firewall to be proactive as far as protecting against these changes. This completes our webinar on DNS Firewall. To find out more, go to www.infoblock.com backslash DNS Firewall.